This plant right here is called Indian paintbrush. This plant likes to grow along meadows and places like this. Um, this plant generally pops up around the springtime and I've I've used this for various things, but my main go-to for this plant is the sweet nectar that's inside these little buds inside the flower. And inside, there are little pockets of the sweet nectar. It's a lot like a honeysuckle. And it's a really nice little pick-me-up when you're on the trail or out camping and you're craving something sweet. It's called the Mariposa Lily. This is a very unique and special plant to the desert southwest because it's one of the two flowering plants that produce a starchy bulb at the base of, of its root. And the reason why it's so important is because starches and carbs are very difficult to come by naturally in the wild where most of the food sources tend to be proteins and fats. So this is a really valuable source for, for uh, one of the three main macronutrients. And uh, you can dig these up with a shovel, a garden trowel, or a digging stick works just fine. They like to grow in these meadowy areas that are rocky and grassy. Um, as you can see here, this is one that's already been dug up. I dug this up. And the root, or the tuber I should say, is right here underneath. You can see it as I peel it away. Oftentimes the tubers will come in sort of a, a, a cluster or a family of tubers as I remove this uh, clay kind of soil out of here. This is, the, this is the base here that connects to the actual flowering plant. So this is it in its entirety here. You see the flower on top? It has a purplish hue on the inside, three petals, and at the base here are the tubers. So in order to eat these, they do kind of have a skin Sort of like a, uh, sort of like an onion. Peel off the first layer. You see that it's just a, a wonderful starchy bulb. You can eat these raw. You can also cook them. You can dehydrate them use them for stews later on. But the taste raw is a lot like, um, like a raw almond. I think it has a really nice earthy flavor. And uh, I mean, you can tell right away that it's incredibly starchy, very sticky. It's a very, very good food source. This plant right here is called blue dick or it can be called desert hyacinth. Now, this is another one of those unique flowering plants that produces the edible tuber at the base. Um, it has six purple to violet uh, flower petals, and it always likes these kind of low, uh, grassy, meadowy areas. Um, so here's one that I dug up, and you can see the tuber at the very base. Just gonna pull the soil away. We'll take one of these. And uh, this is a little different than the uh, Mariposa lily in the sense that it has a different kind of skin. It's more of a hairy skin. It's a lot like an onion. Um, and all you really have to do is just take that off. And you can just eat it whole. There is a difference in taste between the blue dick and the, uh, and the mariposa lily. The blue dick is a lot more like a potato. Um, it is actually a lot more starchy, I think, um, and it has more of an earthy flavor. Um, but still, this is a very valuable plant out here. This plant right here is called bear grass. This is another one of those ubiquitous plants in the area. Uh, as you can see, it loves to grow in these meadowy areas. It also loves to grow in rocky slopes and things like that. That's where the bear grass likes to be. It loves high drainage in the soil. So there are a few prominent uses of this plant. The first use is a thatching material for shelters. A lot of the Apaches in southern Arizona love to use the bear grass to thatch their wickiups and things like that. It makes good roof shingles if you can bundle them up and then tie them onto the shelter. Another use is its 
flexibility and its ability to be a killer basketry material. You can dry out the leaves, soak them, and then mellow them and weave them into mats, baskets, all kinds of containers. The final use I'd like to mention about this plant is the ability to make fire with sticks. And we can do that from the flower stalk that grows and shoots up. This is the second year's or last year's growth. And uh, the, they're best to collect around October, but you can get them to follow through the next year. This is an excellent soft wood and it's ideal for friction fire.